Hello YouTubes! Welcome back. Today I wanted to do a vlog on something that's often overlooked. It's a small item, but I feel a necessary item. And that is bolt heads. These guys are easy to make. I've got a couple of different ways. Uh, we use them on furniture, we use them on facades, we can use them on weapons, on armor. I mean, there's a million uses for them. We can make a bunch, replicate them for fast and cheap, and use them on multiple things in our haunts. So let's go to the bench and get cracking on these things. Okay, YouTubes. So to start this project, I was on Amazon and I found these guys. They're ice cube trays, silicone molded, so they're nice and flimsy and floppy. Uh, you get four of them for, I think I paid 13 bucks. I'll go ahead and I'll link my uh, Amazon list below of supplies and stuff that I commonly use on my channel. But I saw these guys and I thought they were pretty awesome. You get like uh, five, one, two, three, five rows of seven, like 35, carry the two, it's like uh, 37. You get around like 37 little uh, supposedly ice cubes out of these, but we're not gonna use these for ice cubes. When I saw these, I thought, oh man, these are bolt heads just dying to be made. So we get four of them, and you get about yeah, close to 150 bolts when you're done for one pouring up. So what we're gonna use, I got a couple of different methods. Here's the one I hate the most that I see people do and it pisses me off. So we're gonna do this one too. I'm gonna show you guys why I hate this method, the hot glue method. Um, we're gonna use some just smooth on epox and res epoxy resin. You could use any brand, it doesn't matter. And we got standby good old fiberglass Bondo uh, resin, which I love using for projects too. Uh, these things are all gonna be strong enough to hold up. These two will. So I've got some stuff set up to go. Man, let's get busy, man. Let's go make some bolt heads. Okay, you two, we're gonna start with this green tray. I got the hot glue fired up and ready to go. We're just gonna pump some glue right into these little trays and we're going to put it aside to let it cool. I'll do a few of these just to show you guys why I hate this method and when I see that it drives me crazy. So I'm going to go ahead and squeeze a few of these out. Alright. I think that's good enough for uh, what we need. I'm going to go ahead and kill the glue gun and we'll move on to resin. Okay, YouTubes, so we've got equal parts A and B. You guys don't have to go out and buy a whole gallon of this. I have these from doing my lock, so I have plenty of extra. Amazon does smell these in small, smaller trial sizes, which are easier to get. Uh, I got a little bit of uh, mica powder here and a brilliant gold, so I figured let's start with like new bolts first. If you wanna make shiny new like grade eight looking bolts, which are usually the shiny gold iridite, we're just gonna use a little bit on a popsicle stick. Doesn't matter which half you pour it in, as long as it's 50-50. I'm going to mix that up real good first before I put the hardener in. So this should yield us some like uh, like some brand new shiny grade 8 bolts if you're doing like a, uh, something like a new piece of machinery or something like that. So we just mix that up real good and thorough. Use a little wasteable popsicle stick. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. They're nuts and bolts. So if you want to go the shiny new route, we're going to do this route. So we mix our equal parts B right into the A. Gets us about two minutes. And we're going to use the same green tray that we put the uh, hot glue in. Okay, so we're about good. Got a couple of minutes. I've done a lot of uh, casting videos. You guys just look down on my channel. I'm sure you'll find there's plenty of them. Like when I do my monster magnets and stuff. So we're all mixed up. We're going to go. And we're just going to pour in. This is going to make us a bunch of brand new shiny bolts. You can pour as much as you want in. If you want little thicker head bolts, doesn't matter. You can pour right across the top. You ain't got to be perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this out, and then we'll move on to like a gray color bolt. Okay, YouTubes. So our uh, grade 8 bolts are all poured out. We're going to slide those guys aside. And I went ahead and mixed up another cup of equal parts A and B resin. I've got some just dark gray pewter in there to simulate just steel bolts. Uh, nothing special. So I've got that pre-mixed, and I thought for this one, let's take it a step further. I've got some just regular orange mica powder, and let's say with the gray bolts, you know, they're steel, they want to rust. Why don't we put a little bit of uh, orange mica powder in the mold, and we can make these guys look like rusty nuts and bolts, or rusty bolts right out of the mold. So we'll just sprinkle a little bit in the mold. We can shake it around a little bit, slap it around. Don't have to be perfect again. We'll just make a rusty version of this. And you can just go ahead and sprinkle some more in for harsher dots if you wanted. 
Okay, we'll call this guy done. We're gonna mix up our parts. We'll go again, B into A, equal parts. We'll mix this real good. Come on now, get it all in there. Wanna hit all the bottom of the sides real good, make sure it's nice and mixed up. All right. It should still have to feel warm in a couple of minutes. So I wanna mix the hell out of it. And let's pour in. So we're gonna pour in right over this mica powder. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill all these little cups up until I run this cup out. And then we'll go on to the next resin. Okay, YouTubes. So we got our other tray pour. These should be our rusty kind of nuts and bolts. We'll slide that over. And I got this one that's been sitting on the back of my truck for a couple of months. It's filthy, it's got dirt and grime and sand and crap all in it. I thought this one is perfect for my next one. Let's do a really heavily corroded one. So the nuts and bolts look all scarred and nasty. So I've got just a little bit of the gray pewter in here, just to add a little bit of a silver tinge. And then I went to the dollar store and I've got my favorite, paprika. Can't beat this whole jug for a dollar. Let's go ahead and pour it in. Oh, there we go, that looks nice and crusty and some heavy texture. We're gonna pour it right up in there, see all that? Mix it right in. Ooh, that's already looking gnarly and grimy. Maybe we should go some more, let's go more. Let's go crazy. All right. Okay, that's plenty. And then I've got some dollar store kosher salt I bought. Again, this whole big jug for a dollar, can't beat that. We'll keep our other parts back here. We're gonna take some of this and we're gonna sprinkle it in the mold. Doesn't matter, you gotta be pretty. You can put a lot in a little bit. You can fill some up if you want to make it look like it's heavily corroded because hopefully when we're done, we can wash this stuff off and make it look like pits and stuff in the lock. So if you like bolts or pretzels, kosher salt's the way to go. So we're gonna go ahead and mix these two guys together. We'll do A right back into B. And you can see it's kind of almost a a rusty looking water, which is pretty cool. Okay, I'll set that on there, I'll mix it up. And then we'll pour and go. And again, it ain't gotta be pretty. You fill them up halfway, less than half, depends on how thick you want your nuts and bolts. Or I guess bolt heads, I should say. And just pour over the wall. So I'm gonna fill all these up. And then we'll come back. And I'm gonna fill up the rest of these trays with a couple other colors since I've got the resins out just to make sure all the pockets are clean. And uh, we'll demold. Okay, you twos. Once before we demold, I had a couple of spaces left in these, so I figured I'm gonna throw some paprika, some orange, and some pewter gray all in the same mix to make like a rusty slurry. I'm gonna go ahead and top this off with the part B. Mix this up real good and try and fill up some of these other spaces. So I'm gonna pour this out in the same disgusting, nasty tray that was in the back of my truck. Right on top of all that salt. Well, you can see that's a, definitely a different color than uh, the prior batch. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and fill these up so I don't waste this resin. And we come back, we're gonna demold all these. We'll see what they look like. Okay, YouTubes, we are demolded. Here are our hot glue ones. Just made of purely hot glue. These are our resin ones with just the gold mica powder that look like uh, brand new nuts and bolts, like gold iridite or like grade eight nuts and bolts. They look great. Uh, these are the ones we dusted the mold in the blue one. We put a little bit of the uh, orange mica powder in there to make it look like rust. So they come out kind of marbly looking like they're just starting to rust. And because we still have mica powder in the mold, the little mounds that were in there leave little imperfections and little pits in the bolt heads. So the more mica powder you put in, the less time it has to absorb into the resin. So it leaves little surface imperfections, which are pretty cool, like the bolts actually, or like the bolt uh, is actually starting to rust. And then we have these guys with had all the sand and the garbage and the junk and the mold, and they look great, just like rusty nuts and bolt heads. And you can still paint these guys, which is great. Um, and the last one that I put everything in, the very last load I mixed, had orange uh, mica powder in it, had the, a little bit of the gray, we had, uh, a little bit of the dollar store paprika in there. We had the kosher salt. It actually absorbed the kosher salt. So the easiest way to make pits in your nuts and bolts would be to go ahead and use extra mica powder with the fast resin because it doesn't have enough time to absorb it and it leaves you more pits. So the, the coarse salt really didn't help. 
but these guys still came out kind of smooth. And then the very last ones you can see with the mica powder and everything and the salt in there, these guys actually have a soft center. So I'm kind of peeling that away. And I don't know if that'll dry up or not because I had so much salt in there, but I'm interested to see how that dries and cures. That's pretty cool. But the rest were all basically straightforward. And the easiest way, I know they're all different levels. If I took my time, I could level them out even when I pour them in the mold, I don't care. But for the most part, when I'm making nuts and bolts, I just take a piece of 80 grit sandpaper. I run the brand new nut and bolt across the back just to make a nice, even, flat surface. Go a little more. You can put some new paper on this damn board. And that flattens it out and gives you some nice scratches that you can go ahead and put a piece of glue on it or a little dab of hot glue or whatever and stick it right to a wall or a project or a piece of armor. But man, we've got crusty nuts and bolts. We've got rusty ones. We've got brand new ones. We've got the hot glue ones. And these are the ones I'm going to show you I'm not a fan of. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint these nuts and bolts, just the hot glue ones, in this black. And then we'll come back and take a look at these things. Okay, YouTubes. So... Here's our hot glue rivets. I painted them black, and I'm going to show you why I hate this method when I see people using it. Um, the same thing it goes for rivets. I see a lot of people make rivets. It's cheaper to buy rivets from Amazon. You get 180 pieces for like 12 or 13 bucks. Use wood. You can paint them. You can glue them. Do whatever you want. But try and stay away from the hot method, the uh, hot glue method. And this is why. Standard heat gun. Now over the summertime and the wintertime and the hot extreme days, these guys will melt and move around. They will not hold up. They will return to glue and they will start to sag and blister and fall off and lose shape. So when you store these things, chances are they're going to fall off and they're going to uh, melt off of your projects or they're going to distort. So I am not a fan of the hot glue. The resin is so much cheaper to use. You can get trial sizes on Amazon for anywhere from 20 to uh probably $25 for the smooth on and any resin will do you can use cheap resins or you can use fiberglass resin it's the same thing but you can see that these guys are rounding off I'm just not a fan I just you're just wasting your time using the hot glue method because when we put our stuff away and we jam in the shed and we get a 120 degree day when it's you know the, the shed sweltering hot this is what your stuff's going to look like when you pull it out of storage for Halloween so not a fan I try and stay away from this method as much as I can. It's cheaper to just go ahead and buy the resin and make them good ones and make them last forever. So we've got all these guys we can use. We can tumble them, we can sand them, we can paint on top of them. They're nice and strong. They'll work forever. If you buy the four pack, which are also in my, uh, uh, I think it's my Amazon list below, you get four of these. They are actually 38. Uh, so you get a hundred and almost 150 rivets out of a, a four pack of ice cube trays. As long as they're silicone, you're not putting silicone in them, you'll get nuts and bolts back out. So I hope this helps you guys out. Okay, YouTubes, that's my uh, bolt tutorial. You guys can crank out bolts, probably 150 of them if you do a full run with the ice cube trays off of Amazon uh, with the four pack. So that's damn near 150 bolts for one run. You guys, like I said, can buy trial sizes of uh, resins online, uh, Amazon sells 20 different companies worth. You can mix and match them, but any resin will do. Fiberglass resin, uh, epoxy resin, plastic resins, it don't matter. You can put whatever color is in you want. You can experiment, but you can crank out a ton of nuts and bolts for projects. New, old, crusty, whatever you guys want. So I hope you guys dig this tutorial and use it. It should come in handy for your haunts and your projects. If you get a chance, go check out my brothers in a trio of terror, Vic over at uh, Misfit Monsters, and uh, Dave at the Weird Kids Show channel. Uh, it is pre-season for us. We're going to be working all the way up till Halloween, bringing you guys projects and stuff. So, hey, stay tuned. we got more coming. We ain't going away. Even though it's off-season for everybody else, it's our season now. So until I see you again, keep it evil. Thanks for watching.